Germany had surrendered three months earlier, but the war in the Pacific continued with an ugly ferocity, killing hundreds of Japanese and Americans a day. A split second changed everything. Right then, 80,000 people were killed, tens of thousands more soon after. When I regained the consciousness, uh, I tried to move my body in the total darkness, but I couldn't move, so I knew I was faced with death. Then, so suddenly, I started hearing my classmates' voices, Mother, help me. God, help me. Uh, brother, I'm here. So I knew I was surrounded by my friends. Setsuko Thurlow was just over a kilometer from ground zero, then a Japanese schoolgirl, now living in Canada, and sharing her account of when the bomb dropped. And every, everybody was covered with blood and burned and blackened and swollen and skin and the flesh were hanging from their bones. Parts of the bodies were missing. Some were carrying their own eyeballs. Then another bomb was dropped on Nagasaki and the war was over in just days. But for years after, what happened in Hiroshima was censored from the Japanese. And when they saw it, many wanted an apology. And I think the president will um, be very careful uh, to, um, to honor both the dead at Hiroshima, uh, also those Americans who uh, lost their lives in the Pacific theater. But Obama won't say sorry. Political apologies may be rare, but they do happen in Canada, residential schools, Japanese internment camps, and just this week over the Kamigata Maru, the ship carrying hundreds of Indians, which Canada turned away a century ago. We generally agree those were wrong now and sometimes pay compensation, but there is a difference with Hiroshima. Many Americans believe dropping the bomb was absolutely the right thing to do. All right, thank you, everybody. Besides, despite no apology all these years, Japan and the U.S. remain close allies, so Obama is likely to choose his words carefully. It is a moment to uh, reflect on something that he has talked a lot about in his two terms as president, nuclear nonproliferation and a world that can move towards peaceful security without uh, the arsenals that exist now. The U.S. still has about 4,700 active nuclear warheads. The Russians about 3,500. More than enough to destroy the Earth many times over. And the numbers have declined significantly since the Cold War. Obama has also made the case for a nuclear-free world. But the U.S. still plans to spend billions over the coming decades to keep the weapons. We have waited 70 years. That's how I feel. And it's too long, too dangerous. The, uh, the sooner we get rid of them, the safer the humanity would be. She's quite something. We, we've heard messages somewhat like that from Obama. Yeah, we certainly have. And as he rounds out his presidency now, Wendy, visiting Hiroshima gives Obama a chance to visit the realities of nuclear weapons and can once again make the case for their eventual end. Thanks so much, David. Quite welcome. David Common.